I don't know about you this morning, but I'm convinced that whatever I've committed to the Lord, I believe that he's able to keep it. I've committed my soul to the Lord. I've committed my life to the Lord. And I believe whatever happens to me in my life, whether there is illness, whether there is sickness, or whether there is death, I believe the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that his work of salvation is not only for me, but his work of salvation is to everyone that believes in him, that turns from their ways, that repents of their sins, that acknowledge him as Lord. And I'm persuaded. And I hope that as we go through the sunset of our lives and as we endure hardship, and as we endure suffering, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that your faith fails not. The good times, the cloudy days, the stormy days that encounter our lives, I pray that you will forever trust in the Lord with all of your heart. In our theme, I will bless the Lord with all, with what? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You're going to hear that every Sunday that I speak because I want that ingrained in our spirit that whatever happens in our experience, that if we will turn and bless the Lord, we bring the presence of God in our situation. I want to talk to you a few minutes about the blessing of suffering. Well, that's a twist, isn't it? How can suffering be a blessing? I trust that in these few moments, your minds will be clear of how suffering is a blessing from God. I'm finishing up in our journey through James Someone asked me last year, are you going to finish? <laughs> I said, yes. I don't like to leave people hanging. Our text is found in, in uh, James 5, 7, and 12. This is the New King James Version. It may differ from the one that you are looking at. Therefore, the, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble among one another and against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as examples of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or any other oath but let your yes be yes and your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. James is telling us to be patient with one another. That's something that some of us, Lord, give me patience. Ignorantly asking for the Lord to give us more trials to give us more tribulations, to give us more testing, because the Bible says trials does what? Develops patience. So why would we ask the Lord continually to bring trials into our lives? We just have to realize that trials will come and that 
we are to bear the fruit of the Spirit in our times of trials because we can never escape the trials that come our way. Jesus has declared that in the world you shall have tribulations, a long-going trial. But how should our hearts be? How should our reactions be? Jesus said, be of good cheer because I've overcome. And we're overcomers as long as we are in Christ. James is telling them, well, be patient with each other because the Lord is, is at hand. The, the coming of the Lord is at hand. See, they expected the Lord to come in their generation. And they were anticipating the coming of the Lord. And many times we become impatient because of our expectations and our anxiousness of something we want to happen at a given place, given time, given day. And we lose patience. Living in a micro-age world makes it increasingly difficult for us to be patient. Hello. I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah. Remember before the microwave came, there was the little um, uh, dinners that we had in uh, aluminum foil, and we placed them in the oven for them to be consumed by us. Now we take the meal and we place it in a microwave for a couple of seconds, 60 seconds, whatever the case may be. We want it when we want it when we want it. I remember back in the 80s, or it could have been the 70s, they had gasoline lines. Remember that? The odd day and the even day. And we had to wait. But there were some that did not want to wait. And they jumped in front of the others that were waiting. And yes, fights broke out because people were impatient with one another. We pray that, we pray and ask God to save our family members or heal our loved ones. And it's not a guarantee that we're going to see it come to pass. But we believe God hears us when we pray. We believe that it is God's will that none should perish and we should begin to speak into their lives and say, I see you loving God. I see a different lifestyle that's coming your way. You see, we have the ability as believers to speak into people's lives. Not based upon what we see, but what the promises of God are. Instead of complaining about, well, they are not coming to church, well, they're not doing this, they're not doing this, just begin to say, Lord, help me to see them doing it. And then you begin to speak that in the air, in their presence. Son, I, I see you living for God. I see God mightily using you. And you've placed a seed in that person's life. You've given them to, something to wrestle with. You've given them some hope in spite of what they're struggling with. We believe that God hears us when we pray. Amen. We're not sending prayers, bouncing off the walls, but we are sending our prayers to a God that hears us, to a God that loves us, and when we have difficulty praying, we have what you call the third person of the Trinity. 
the Holy Spirit to take our groanings to God. And we have Jesus to intercede in our behalf. Father, I know what it is to be human. Father, just give this person grace. Father, I have shed my blood for, for that person. Aren't you glad that God is patient? Hello, hello, hello. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today. Hello. I'm glad that God is patient with each and every one of us. We haven't arrived, but we are on our way. We're in the path. We're in the path of righteousness. We're in the light. We are children of light. And I'm glad that, that God did not lose patience. He reminds us that James, the brother of Jesus, reminds us that we cannot rush God. Hello. I know some people that uh, I'm in fellowship with, an older uh, lady, believer. She says, I pray, and if God doesn't answer me in five minutes, I'm going. Or I'm going to do this. Or I'm going to do that. And you know what happens? She has more problems. Hello. The Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the, what else? What, what are they going to mount up with? The wings of who? Eagles. And they, they're going to run and what? Not be weary. And they're going to walk and not what? They're not going to faint. There are a lot of people who are fainting because they just refuse to wait on the Lord. God does not have to meet our expectations when we come to realize that we're not in charge. Isn't that a wonderful feeling that, that you're not in charge? That it's not up to you? That, that's freeing. Hello, that's, that, that gives me a lot of room. You see, if I think that I'm in charge, I've got all of the problems. Hello. I've got all the burdens. I have to make all the decisions. I'm glad that I'm not in charge, and so should you be glad that you're not in charge. There are people who make a practice of trying to control by manipulation and demands placed upon time, events, and others. First application, God is never in a rush because he is working out all the details. You know, sometimes we feel like we got the plan. We have the details. We have the answers. You see, God does not move until there is a fullness. If you have read your Bibles, you understand that God moves in the fullness of his time. Not in the fullness of our time, but he moves in the fullness of his time. So therefore, we have to wait patiently upon waiting for the Lord. Trials are necessary for us to develop our patience and trust in God. Trials is something that we would never choose. We don't get up in the morning and say, Lord, give me a trial. Hello. We don't ask one another, could you give me a trial, please? That's something we don't look forward to. Hello. 
But trials are necessary to determine where we are in our faith. You see, we can say one thing. We can do another thing. But the truth of the matter is, where are you spiritually in your faith? Trials are necessary. We could never expect or choose the complications that are appropriate for the development of our, of our patients. One of our problems is that we live in a time-sensitive society. We want it, we want it when we want it. We want it wherever it is or whatever it is. We want it when we want it. And therefore, we lack the patience to receive what God has for us. And the problem is, is that we run ahead of God. God has to work out every detail. See, the details that he's working out is probably us. You see, the Bible reminds me that there is some stuff and there is some things that Jesus wanted to reveal and say to his disciples, but they were not ready to receive it. And I know this to be true today, that God wants to do things for us, but we are not in a position spiritually to receive what God desires for us. So God has to wait patiently upon us until we get to that point, until we get to that place. And when we get to that place, God is able to bless us. You want to be blessed? Learn to wait on the Lord. You see, waiting is not just sitting with your arms folded. Hello, I'm going to wait right here till the Lord comes. Till he answers my prayer, I'm going to wait right here. No, when you go to a restaurant, there's a waiter. And the waiter comes to get your request. Hello. And to serve you. And to wait upon you. So as a waiter, as we who are waiting on the Lord, we serve. We get requests. Well, on my menu today, would you pray for this? Would you pray for that? I need the Lord to do this. I need the Lord to do that. So we're waiting on one another. We're bearing with each other's burdens. God has blessed us in heavenly places. I tell you, there's nothing like the God we serve. Patience is required both by the parties who are giving and the party who is receiving. We expect people to understand that we need more time while we require from them less time. Hello. By exercising patience, it helps us to bear one another's burdens. Galatians 6 verse 2 says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law. Carrying each other's burdens. Now, do we carry the burden on our shoulder? I think not. Do we drag the burdens behind us like luggage? I think not. We carry one another's burdens to the Lord in prayer. That's how we bear each other's burdens. We pray 
for one another. I'm so glad that I'm a part of a praying church, people that exercise the, the, the ability to pray and the ability to affect people's lives. I can't tell you the importance of prayer. Application number two, and you're wondering if I'm going to complete it. Yes, I am. There's five application points. We stand firm in our belief that God is faithful. There are many things that change in life except God. Delays will always reveal where we are emotionally and spiritually. We must avoid the temptation of taking things into our hands after asking for God's intervention and direction in our affairs. Can't take it back. Allow him to do what he wants to do the way that he wants to do because it's going to be good. It's going to be a good thing. He's the only one that can take a bad thing and make it good. Look at your hands. He's the only one that could take a bad thing and make it good. And that's our lives. God has made us to be his children. And we praise him for that. There is nothing that we've done to deserve it. There is nothing that we can do to earn it. Do you ever think that the longer the wait could lead to a greater blessing? Hello? Do you ever think the longer the wait, the greater the blessing? Sometimes we don't think in those terms because of our anxiousness, because we lack patience. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, 24, uh, the NIV, may the God himself, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify your whole spirit through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and will do it. Number three, application number three, grumbling is not a fruit of the spirit. I didn't see that in, on the list. Grumbling is not a fruit of the Spirit. In the Old Testament, grumbling would result in swift judgment from God. In, uh, in, 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 in Numbers 14, 11, it says in the NIV, The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me in spite of all the miraculous signs I have performed among them? If it hadn't been for Moses interceding in their behalf, judgment would have come. But yet, it still came because there were people who refused to accept what God wanted for them. They grumbled and they complained. Application number four we do not choose suffering. Suffering chooses us. We don't say, well, can I have a cup of suffering today? Honey, would you put me some hot water on because I want to uh, use my tea of suffering? No, we don't choose suffering. Suffering chooses us. It's not something that we would want. We look at the prophets and the patriots of our faith who were blessed by God, but yet they suffered because of their faith. Faith goes contrary to public opinion and world philosophy. Believing in God and his word will sometimes cause us to stand alone with him. Hello. Are you ready to stand alone with him? Or are you working for collaboration? Loving God and people does not exempt us as believers from suffering. On the contrary, living for the Lord invites suffering. Philippians 1.29 says, For it has been granted to you 
on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him. The blessing of suffering is in Christ alone, and that we have become worthy to be like him. This blessing drives us to deep fellowship with our Lord that otherwise would not have happened. My sister is so well glad, well glad, well glad that she fell, injured herself, and recovered with direction to serve the Lord with more intensity. You see, she suffered. But in that suffering, she was blessed. Now, it's her desire to bless other people in regards to what God is able to do. You look at the beginning of the church and how the apostles were blessed after they preached the word of God and people came to Christ. And after that followed some suffering. So if you're doing the job well, if you're doing what is necessary to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to testify of what God has done in your life, you are a candidate to be blessed through your suffering. We have never invited suffering. We just have to endure it. Because the longer we live, the more the chances are that we will suffer. Hello. And some of you can relate to that. Some of you can identify with that. That as long as we are in these bodies of clay, we are subject to suffer. But allow our suffering to be for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ and not because we brought it upon ourselves. If I went out and robbed a bank, well, you know I'm going to suffer something, don't you? I've caused that. But I don't cause the suffering that comes with the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ and living for him. The question is, are we willing to allow our suffering to lead others to Christ? Hello. Are we willing to allow our suffering to lead other people to Christ? Our lives are about Christ in us, reflecting the glory of God by the indwelling Holy Spirit. Application number five, praise God, praise God. I know you're praising the Lord now because I understand these chairs that you're sitting in. They're not very friendly. They speak to you. Get up. Get up. Application five, we never are to swear an oath. People and politicians alike will swear an oath knowingly that they will never fulfill it. James is reminding us that Jesus said in Matthew 5, 33 through 37 about making vows that we cannot keep. I remember growing up when kids used to swear on their mother's grave. Hello. You see, in that day, they sweared about everything. I swear to the mountain, I swear to the earth, I swear to my field that I'm going to do this and do that. And if we swore about anything like that, if we made an oath about anything like that, guess what we were doing? We were crossing our fingers, hoping that nothing happened. And so... He is telling us that we should never make a vow. What happens when we make a vow to one another is that we, when we don't fulfill the vow, when we don't fulfill the obligation, when we commit ourselves to something 
and something happens and we don't fulfill that commitment. It destroys trust. Hello. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but it destroys trust. So James is saying so that you will not get in that predicament, it is best to say, if the Lord wills. We make commitments, but we never add that if the Lord wills. You see, because it's all about him willing it and not us doing it. And so if you want to maintain a relationship with one another, please make a practice of saying, if it's the Lord's will, because we have no power to, to make things happen. We have to allow God to, to do what he wants to do in spite of those situations. He may want to redirect us. So if we say, if it's the Lord's will, we may disappoint the person, but we've already qualified our statement in regards to saying, if it's the Lord's will. Here are five, uh, four points to ponder in your heart this week. Am I allowing my anxiousness to cause me to be less tolerant with one another? Have I been complaining and not trusting God? Do I make commitments and look for a way out? Am I prepared? to suffer for the sake of the gospel? Am I prepared to suffer for the sake of the gospel? Father God, we are so grateful for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We bless you and we praise you for the keeping power of your Holy Spirit. And Father, we pray that as you look upon us, as you look upon each individual, that you may see your image, your reflection. Father, we know and realize that it's not enough just to believe, but that we must be willing to suffer for the cause of Christ and the spread of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.